Welcome everybody, this is Jeff St. Laurent, it's the Live Tuesday Call. Just had a great conversation with the people that had called in today talking about our topic, which is the it factor, you know, and identifying, you know, what is exactly that it factor and, you know, how do we develop this? How do we hone this for ourselves in our coaching business so that ultimately, you know, we can create a full-time business by getting paid, you know, and that's the, that's the end, that's the end goal in a, in a lot of ways is, you know, hey, if we're going to be doing this, uh, what we love as a coach, we've got to be able to get paid for it. We've got to be able to get those clients. And so we're going to kind of dive into that if factor a little bit and, and uh, kind of just being able to identify it more effectively so you can identify it within yourself and be able to bring it out more on demand without actually even having to think about it because it's just a natural part of you. Before we get going, just to make you aware of a few things, I do always record these Tuesday calls and I put them in the university on Fridays. Uh, my website is sellingcoaching.com. So if you hit up sellingcoaching.com, go to the university. Um, I've got some categories there so you can um, you know, tech, separate all the videos by the categories or the search feature. Um, but I've got all my Tuesday call recordings in there. And then also uh, we have a, a, quite a few shorter videos, let's say two to three minutes or so. And all of my focus is and what I do is I help coaches transition to a full-time business. So if you're in a position where you're looking to transition to full-time business, this is the right spot and I can definitely assist you. So we've got a lot of great stuff there. Also on my website, sellingcoaching.com, right at the top of every page, there's a little uh, banner that says, join my private Facebook group. Uh, for those of you that aren't there, I definitely at least recommend that you check it out. It's just a great community of coaches. Uh, we're closing in on 1,000. As of, as of right now, before the call, we had 998 people in the group. So I'm hoping maybe by the end of today or at least by... And tomorrow we we uh, we hit that benchmark of a thousand, so it's exciting. And with that being said, it's just a great opportunity for us to connect on different levels, share some work that you're doing. Um, we're doing some great things in there now. Something called the Visibility Challenge of challenging you to create videos so you can uh, uh, speak your voice and become more proficient with what you're doing. And I'll even reference uh, that with what we're talking about today with the It Factor as a as a method of beginning to become more comfortable in in your own verbiage, etc. So. That's some great resources for you as well. And then lastly, obviously, if you're in a position where you, know, you want a little more guidance and you, you, know, you want to kind of take that steep curve out and flatten it out a little bit so you can move further, faster, sooner, I mean, you know you require some uh, mentoring. I am available for one-on-one -on -one mentoring, and I also have a great group mentoring program as well. Best way to reach out to me is just go to my site, tellingcoaching.com, go to the um, Work With Me page, and then at the bottom there's a little form. And I always just say, fill it out, it comes right to me. Let's just create a conversation and, and kind of see where it goes with no strings attached. So with that being said, let's kick this off. And uh, I'm excited about this, this topic because uh, I was on my, uh, one of my mentoring calls yesterday with one of my clients. And I was working with them. It was actually one of our first, uh, first sessions. And as I, I work with my mentoring clients, one of the first things we work at, if they haven't developed it already, um, once we've identified what type of a business they want to have, you know, in terms of defining it in terms of virtual based, more face to face, so forth and so on, um, really where we start off with them is, is starting to identify who they're going after. You know, people will call it a niche. I like to call it your headline, you know, helping who with what specifically. And as we're starting to talk about this, this was a coach who had been doing it for a year or so now, had a website go in, had some social media go in, and, and felt as if, you know, they had defined it really well, uh, but in, you know, taking a look at their site and after a conversation, we both agreed that they hadn't defined it very well at all, in fact. Um, but after talking with her for a little while and, um, you know, just hearing her energy on the phone and uh, seeing how passionate uh, they were around talking around some of the topics, and even though they were very general, one of the things I said to her was, which then ultimately led to this as a topic, uh, you know, for today's call, was, and this is something that I learned in my business and I want to share with, with all of you right now because I feel this is important to understand, is that while it's very important, I'd say vitally important, to define your headline, your niche, 
uh, as, as succinctly and narrowly as you can, meaning helping who with what specifically. While it's vital in a lot of senses because it, it just, it just in so many ways, it just helps us identify like where are these people and, and what are we helping them with? What are, where are we going after them? From a marketing perspective, it, it, it narrows down and it, it sets boundaries for us, which are good in the sense of our topics and what we can share and what we can talk about and what we could educate them on as opposed to everything, you know, the world is ours type of thing. It's like, well, no, we talk about this. Like I talk about, talk about you know, helping coaches transition to a full-time business. I relate everything back to selling and the art of uh, selling and that skill set. You know, it's a very specific audience going for a specific thing with a specific skill set. You know, it's very narrowed down. So it helps these calls and, and it helps everything I talk about become a lot more relevant and specific and the more relevant and specific something is, the more valuable something is. And again, that goes back to selling because if something's more valuable to you, you're more apt to purchase it or see more perceived value and go from there. You know, so with that being said, obviously it's a vital, vital piece. Now, all that lead into this thing, okay, Jeff, where are you going, right? We, you sold me on like how important that is, that piece. But now, with that being said, there's one thing that will trump that. Trump it meaning that if you don't have any of that stuff and you're as you know, broad as can be, you know, I help everybody do anything. <laughs> let's, just, let's just leave it at that, right? And you, and you haven't gone much further than that. There's one thing that will trump that and that is this something called the it factor. And what I mean by that is, um, and what I was talking to my client about is I said, you know what, if you get out there and you are powerful and you are confident and you have an energy and you have that it and you have that, uh, you know, that, that attractor factor, you know, that, that quality that is infectious and you're likable and, and people are drawn to you um, and you speak in front of those people, then all that stuff that you write on your website or free offer or whatever else it is and you know, how narrow or broad it is, it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. And, and I'll say that you know, with, with a caveat to it all, meaning, you know, well, yeah, of course, some of it matters, right? But, but I want to trump it all because at the end of the day, you know, the, if you played cards or a game with as a trump card, it's like, you know, the ace of trump beats every other card out there. It doesn't matter. I, I like equate the it factor to being, you know, the ace of trump. It meaning that it's just like, you know what, you could be as broad as, as ever, um, but when you're out there um, and you have it, people are drawn to you. And so it, that, at that point, it doesn't matter um, what your headline says. It doesn't matter where you went to school or what your background is or what your experience is. They just know that you can help them. They believe that you can help them. They don't know how, they don't know how it would take place. They don't even really know what you do. They don't even care what you do. They just have this feeling from listening to you. And, and as a result of that, they're interested. They don't even know what they're interested in, um, but then through that conversation that leads us to, you know, a complimentary recession and then them hiring us. So that's, that's the reason I wanted to talk about this, this it factor, because if we can start to identify what that is, within ourselves and start to hone and practice those, let's say, skill sets, qualities, attributes, as we identify that, because they're different for everybody, um, then we can express that more. We can portray that more. We can have it out there more, and we can begin to, begin to experience that. Now, let me, let me say this all. I said, you know, the caveat to that. The main caveat to that at all is, is while it trumps everything else, I'll still always go back to, once we've got someone interested, you're still gonna have to learn the art of selling and that skill set. So with all that being said, and this is why I always pin you know, everything and the reason why the whole crux of my business and, and helping coaches transition to full time and why I'm so adamant about teaching the selling and those aspects of it, is even when, with my one-on-one -on -one clients, group clients, I mean, I want to get them all set up and structured and all that good stuff and get them marketing. But where I really can't wait to do with them is to me is the reward is once I've been able to do that with them is when they start interacting with people and getting interested people and leads. I want to help teach them that interaction, you know, from by, by email, by email, you know, message by message and teaching them what to say and how to say it and why, why this and why that. That's the skill set we want to learn. So 
I, I, I don't want to misguide you today in a sense in saying that, oh yeah, you've got this SID factor and you're rocking it and you know people are just attracted to you that you're just going to all of a sudden get all these clients. You're going to get a lot more interest and people are going to be drawn to you, but at the end of the day, um, you still want to be able to take them through the qualification process that I teach you um, and then learn how to take them through that process so you increase your odds of them actually hiring you. Um, with that even being said from there, just know that because you've done such a great job and because they're so attracted to you, you know, from the energy and the message that you share, um, they're much more likely to be that much more interested. They're much more likely um, to be at that place of wanting to work with you. So in that sense, it does make that, uh, that qualification uh, process easier only because they're, they're a much more qualified lead because they're so interested versus people are just, I don't really understand what you do or there's nothing like drawing them to you. And that's the point of it is, is to be able to get out there and express yourself in your marketing with whatever you're doing. When I say marketing, I mean um, virtual marketing. You see with me, I do calls like this, live calls. I do videos. I write some things. I've got my Facebook group. I got my email community. You know, if you're on some of those um, aspects of what I do, that's my, if you will, virtual marketing. It's my way of connecting and interacting with my audience. Um, and then the other marketing would be uh, virtual marketing, like maybe paid ads. Other marketing would be face-to-face uh, -face, you know, communication, especially maybe not networking events, but especially uh, live events. And that's what I'd say there is if you're going to get to that place where um, you're going to start to hone this, one of the places I'd recommend you go, if it's a part of your business model, is speaking live events face-to-face. Um, -face. And that's a great place where if you can start to hone this that we'll talk about today, this it factor, um, that's where it can really be resonated. You can, you can get it over the phone, you can get it um, you know, virtually as well, but honing that in a live audience situ situation, live events, that's the place to be. Even events like this on the phone that are live, Live is different than recorded, you know, it's just a different animal. So beginning to master those both is a very big element of it. And so when I talk about this it factor, I wanted to kind of set the stage for that and, and the relevance of it and why I'm really talking about this. Um, you know, this it factor, like as I say, it's, it's, um, it's somewhat, it's very subjective in a lot of ways. And with the people that had called in, you know, for this call today, we, I'm like, hey, well, what does it mean to you? You know, and, and all the answers kind of like all circled around the same thing. You know, it's this energy that people put out. And it, I, I could almost summarize it in that energy. It's, it's a, a certain attractive energy that people are drawn to. And, and it just comes from within. And it almost is like, does it, the person doesn't necessarily know like they're putting it out. It's not like they, okay, I'm going to turn on my attraction switch and I'm just watch this, you know, check this out. You know what I mean? Um, but in a lot of ways, I, I want it to be like that, not in the sense that it's inauthentic because everyone that we're talking about, and I agree as well, it's, it's, it's just a real place. It's an authentic space. Um, but when I say I want you to be able to turn it on is because, um, you want to know what it is and it's turning on it. it how about this? Turning it on, meaning uh, I, I believe it's tapping into an energy. It's tapping into an energy inside. And let me, let me qualify that, um, that energy is, is, let's call it a passion. It's tapping into an energy that comes from a passion inside. So, you know, like before this call, I'm just in my office. You know, I'm not, I'm not you know, excited or just, I'm just doing my thing. I'm not, you know, whatever. I could be in any type of a mood, right? But when I get onto this call and people start calling in and I start, you know, in, you know, interacting with them, so on and so on, and, you know, then you hear me hit the recording and you hear me, you know, go into that, okay, welcome to the Selling Coaching Call, I'm Jeff St. Laurent. I, I don't know if you can hear a shift in the energy, but, like, I'm on, like, I switch on, and it's a different energy I'm tapping into. Um, it's not a, you know, a, a, a fake energy, it's just, it's, I'm tapping into my passion, right? I'm tapping into something that I'm, I'm excited about, I want to deliver, you know, it's a relevant, it's a, it's a timely topic based on what's going on with my people and things like that. And, and that's where you could, that's what I mean by the turning it on as, as an example. And I want you to be able to switch that on. And when you go live, it, it's kind of like a, an actor or an actress. Um, but unlike that, it, acting or acting is exactly that, it's acting, right? Um, it's, it's taking one out of oneself and becoming another character. So... What I want you to be able to do is, is when the lights go on and when you're on stage, tap into this. But the greatest part about it is, is that when, 
when it's real, when it's passionate, when it's coming from you, um, it's believable. And you know, just like an actor or an actress, um, when and I never went to theater school, but you know, just talking to people and those of you that maybe have done that, is what makes someone so great is like, oh, the, you know, it's so real, right? You believe it's happening to them, and you can be sitting. You know, maybe if you're like me, like maybe watching a movie and I'm like sitting there crying my eyes out or I'm laughing my ass off or I'm, you know what I mean? Or I'm angry, I'm, I'm frustrated and I'm just like clenching my jaw watching this movie. It's real. But you know, they tap into real elements of their life and experiences that they've been through to draw out that real emotion. So in a lot of ways, it's not pretending. It's actually, it's, it's real for them. And this is starting to identify like, how do we bring up this it factor, right? Because this it factor is like, a lot of people think like, oh, it's just like you either have it or you don't. And, that, and that's the thing I want to kind of debunk today and say, well, okay, if you believe that, that either you have it or you don't, then that's just what you believe. But I'm here today to say like, well, what if that's not true? What if, what if, if you have it, you have it, great. If you have it, what I'd recommend is you identify what it is. What is that about you? What is it about you that people are attracted to, that people are oh, excited about, that just people seem to open up to you when you speak to them or they're gravitating to you? So understand that so you can do it on demand, so you can tap into that, so you can hone those skill sets more. You know, a lot of what I've understood, um, you know, for myself is, is just, it's a natural, um, authentic, childlike uh, enthusiasm. That's what I've heard it described before. And, and the only way uh, about myself, the only way I started to learn it was I asked people. You know, I asked people all the time, like, what was it that, you know, why me? Why are you interested in working with me versus somebody else? You know, what, what is it that you liked about what I'm doing here? Um, what is it about me? And, and, and when people talk and, and you ask for testimonials and things like that, those are things that as you start to work with more and more people, um, that you want to start to learn about yourself. A, a lot of people, don't want to hear that stuff. Like they don't, they don't want to learn about themselves. They don't want to study themselves. But as a coach, what I'm suggesting is, especially around this area, is I want you to start to study yourself. I want you to start to understand the attributes that are great about you. It's not because we're oh, I want to, I want you to hone, tap in your ego, or you know, I mean, this fake confidence, or you know, be cocky or egotistical. It's like that's not what it is at all. I want you to find like what are those, what are those qualities that other people are envious of that they're like, oh my God, I wish I had the blank of this person, or I wish I could do this like them, or they do such a great job of this. You know, understand those aspects about yourself. Um, know what you're great at. I am a big advocate and believer that, you know, just naturally, there's some natural skill sets and abilities that we all have, you know, that we, we tap into throughout our life. Uh, and maybe we develop some of these things. Maybe they're just, you know, we're born with some of them and, and we just hone them as we, as we grow and mature and have life experiences. You know, but with that being said, you know, there's always people along the way, you know, our teachers and our peers and our parents and our friends that say, oh, you know, they're so great at this. You know, and it might not be math. It might not be reading. It might not be, you know, creativity or whatever. But there's something that, you know, I know someone somewhere along the way, hopefully, you know, said that about you, like, oh, they're, they're so great at this, or there's things that you, you know in, in a lot of ways, maybe you're afraid to admit it, or maybe don't like to say it to anybody because you don't want to come across like you're full of yourself or something, but there's some things about you that you feel you do well, and what I'm asking you to do today is, is start to identify those more and, and start to really work on them. In other words, what I was saying is, is I believe there's, there's aspects where, where we're really strong and we're really good at, and then there's, a, there's other things that we're not good at at all. So the, that's understanding yourself, self-awareness uh, of where we are in the world and what we contribute and what maybe areas we're not, we're not great at. And um, what I'm suggesting is, is you know, focus on the areas that you're really great at and, and find a way to draw some of those out as opposed to areas you're not great at or not, you know, whatever. And, you know, oh, I got to get better at this, got to get better at that. It's like, let's accentuate the high points already and make them even higher and even bigger. Um, and then with some of those, if you will, other areas that maybe we, I'll say it like this, we could be better at, find out which ones are, are necessary 
for you to be better at in your business. That's the key thing, right? So for instance, would be like uh, the selling skill set, right? If, if I don't care if you're, how you feel about selling, but if you're not great at it, or you're uncomfortable with it or you know, anywhere in between, or especially even if you feel good at it, I, I'd suggest to take a look at it because I've had plenty of people that I've worked with that you know, their, mark, their background was marketing and sales. And I will tell you, every single one of them said once they get into this that, wow, it's nothing like what I you know, have done before. It's different. It's a different animal. You know, marketing and sales is different in, in different areas. You know, I might be a great selling expert in this arena. It might translate to a few other arenas and general concepts, but you take me into a, another world, you know, you know what I mean? I'm, I don't even know as an example, um, but I'm sure there's a lot of arenas where you know, my style and what I do just does not work, you know? So um, it, sales is not sales in a lot of ways. There might be some, uh, you know, fundamental underlying things that maybe cross it all. But the point being is, um, as an example of something that maybe you aren't good at, that you really need to get good at in some ways, um, there are some of those areas. So find out what those are. Um, but remember, there are, there's two different areas we're, we're talking about here when, if I'm relating it just to the it factor, right? And the it factor is this, is this people attraction, this client attraction, this attractor factor, this, this magnet, if you will, that people are drawn to you um, and they're interested and they're talking to you and they're coming to you and they're reaching out to you. That's, that's a big piece of this is there's, you know, what skill sets are like behind the scenes stuff, like, oh, I'm, ter I'm a terrible tech person, you know what I mean? Or, oh, yeah, even maybe the, the selling skill set or something like that. Okay, well, that, that, there's no bearing on, on the it factor if you're a horrible tech person or, you know, you can't sell, right? Obviously, if you attract the people, like I said, the caveat is, well, we've got to be able to understand the process after that to qualify and so forth and so on. Um, but I'm talking for the it factor is, is like, think about the qualities from a presentation standpoint. And, um, and the interesting part about it is, you know, if you've seen things like TED Talks, um, if you've gone to any live type of shows, um, and it could be a, a big show, like a Broadway show or, or, or live show concert, um, or something like even in my email that I sent out uh, yesterday, you know, for, if you're on my email list, you, hopefully you saw this, but either way, it's something I went to dinner with my buddies on um, Saturday night, and there was a, a solo guy playing a guitar at this, at this restaurant, you know, and he was good at what he did. He played the guitar well. He sang well. He had some good songs. But like, it was just something missing. Like, no one was like compelled to like give large audiences or like turn around or it was you know a place where people could have danced or something like that. You know, it just it, there was just something missing. You know, I didn't walk away there going, oh, this guy was horrible. But it, it's just like you walk away and that's not what you talk about. You didn't talk about like, oh my god they had this guy there and he was incredible. You just go, hey, that was a great meal and you know, the beer was great, you know what I mean? And so there's that, that space of it. Um, so we wanna be able to, we've all seen it exemplified in our world, but where I'm going with this is simply understanding that there's all different types of it factors in terms of behavior and personality, if you will, and how it's expressed. You know, you might see someone, uh, let's say like a Tony Robbins, I'm trying to use maybe people that people would definitely know, right? Like a Tony Robbins, who um, just, if you've seen him live or you've heard his audio uh, courses and things like that, he's just like, Roar! and he, you know what I mean? He's, he's energetic and he's powerful and he, you know, he's a big guy as well. So he just has a presence about him, but he's got a, a high level of energy that he's putting out there and a very expressive and emotive and then, I don't know if you can look these guys up, but if you haven't heard of them, but then there's like an Eckhart Tolle uh, who wrote a book like called The Power of Now or A New Earth um, or Don Miguel Luis, uh, The Four Agreements was one of his books. You know, and these are some people that I, I, I've, you know, my, in, have been uh, personal to me in my development as well. But like a, an Eckhart Tolle, like if you, if you read his stuff, number one, it's like you can read a page and read it like a hundred times and, and that's all you need. <laughs> it's, it's so deep, you know what I mean? But if you, if you listen to his audio courses, because I'm an, I'm an audio person, that's how I learn, so it's, I'm listening to him. He actually reads uh, his books in, in for the audio. So if you went to like an audible.com, for instance, um, and he's like the most flat, like boring, 
and I'm not, I'm judging him. Absolutely. Like, it's just like, you be like, seriously, I have to listen to this guy. It's just like, it's like a flat line effect. Um, but his information's so good. It's so good. And, and actually it works for, for his stuff because it's so deep and it's so, um, I guess in depth is the only word I can say for it that, you know what, it, it doesn't accentuate anything. It just, it's the way he reads it and expresses himself is just, I would say objective, meaning it just it allow it allows you to interpret what he's doing. But with that being said, is is like there's two. I'm trying to give opposite spectrums of energy, if you will. But he Eckhart Tolle definitely has an it factor, right? And and maybe that it factor comes through his information, right? Maybe it's not through his energy or personality, but it's just a different energy that he has, right? It's a different style, and everyone, if you listen to him or watch him or read him, like you might start to, you might have a different uh, reason or how you define that it factor. Same thing with a Tony Robbins. And, and, and with that being said, one person might be like, oh my God, I love Tony Robbins. Another person might be just like, yeah, he's just too much. He's too over the top or he's too, blah. you know, whatever it is, you wouldn't agree with that, right? So that's where that subjective piece comes in. But the bigger picture to that all is, is just recognize that this it factor can be expressed in so many different ways. And you can see people, like I said, on a TED Talk or something like that, where you know they, they don't have to be a certain way, or if you have to assess in your head, like, well, what what do I think this this it factor has to be, you know, based on maybe people that you've seen or heard that have it, you know, according to you. And just remember, like, well, does, if you're not like that, don't try and be like that. Don't try and you know do those things. Just where I'm going with this is is start to understand. Um, what you're great at, where your skill sets are at, what talents that you have, and then how can you begin to express those more? How can you begin to tap into that? Typically, when I, if I circle back to the beginning of the call when I talked about helping my clients, uh, you know, helping them figure out the, the, the headline, helping who with what specifically, what I always ultimately go back to, no matter what we start, before we start going down the road is, it's like, well, is that, are you passionate about that? You know, it might be a great piece you know, and it might sound really good and it might get us where we want to go, but you know, what passion, how passionate are you about that? And you know, if you had a full roster of clients around that, if you're giving talks around that every day and doing emails around it and education around it, and that's your world, you're immersed in that audience and that topic, what does that do for you? You know, and I'm like, are they excited? Are they like, oh my God, that would be fantastic? Or you know, I've had some clients where they're like, ugh. I don't, I don't know if I want to view this, you know, like maybe they went through a divorce and they're going to start maybe helping, uh, you know, women thrive through divorce or something like that. And they're thinking like, oh, I don't, I don't know if I want to be in that all the time, right? Then I was like, all right, forget it. It's a very well-defined area, but if, if there's no passion around it, that's going to start showing up. And so it's like, where can we start tapping into that passion? And, and part of my message too here is, as is, is I kind of said earlier, and I'll, I'll elaborate again to say, Remember I said that Trump, you know, it trumps that, the card, it trumps the headline, it trumps everything else. Um, so if you can tap into that passion, and maybe right now, right now your passion is just personal development, maybe it's very general, but if you can get out there and speak a message that's really powerful, that's what I'm encouraging you to do. You know, when I started off in, in 2004 and starting to do seminars, starting my coaching business, um, what I did was, is I just started talking about what I was passionate about. I had no freaking clue what I was doing, and I'm a hundred... I mean, 100% truthful here. It's like I had no clue what I was doing. I was just tapping into just like, I'm so excited. And I see a lot of myself and coaches that I begin to work with and as the people as I interact in my Facebook group and so forth and so on is, you know, they just get so excited. But then what happens is it gets suppressed and, and muted uh, with overwhelm because I don't know how to take all this and, you know, start to put it out there. And what I'm saying for, for this right now with this it factor is, if you are super passionate about something and you can get a strong message out there, even if it is very general, um, I'd encourage you to start speaking on that. You know, get out there and start speaking in front of people and start to see what that can do. Start to see where that can lead you. Um, because that's, that was my experience as I started to get out there and I started to speak with people. And I mean, I mean, God, my first seminar was on SMART goals. You know, make it specific and measurable and actionable and oh my God, like how more basic could you be, uh, I, I think, you know, from a, from a perspective. But it's like, you know what? I was passionate about it. It wasn't even my own material, right? I mean, I didn't make up smart goals. Like, it's someone else did. I don't know. But I was just using that. And I just, 
I just presented it and I put it together and I invited people that I knew and my, my personal training clients and family and friends and it's just like, I just spewed a whole bunch of passion, you know, like, huh, this is, this is me and people loved it, you know, and that's where it started coming from and that's where I started developing clients from um, and that's where I started getting referrals into other companies which led me to State Farm and then, uh, you know, Cobalt Banker and Keller Williams and then personal clients and Nike and, and a whole bunch of other, you know, great companies that I did a lot of good work with. Um, and that's where I'm asking you is to start to um, tap into something of that passion. And because what that's going to do is, if we can go a little bit deeper, you know, about this energy, you know, I, I like to say it's like this. There's something, you've got to be likable, right? And this is, this can tap into a lot of negative self-beliefs around ourselves. Like I'm not lovable. I'm not worthy. You know, no one likes me. No one loves me come from our childhood and I'm not going to go into all that stuff. But the, the point is, is that there's a key element, I believe around what an it factor is for somebody is there's an element or a large element of likability in that person. It's like, I like this person. Right? This is, I, and they might even have, I, I think of one of my clients, for example, and, and she's been doing videos and it's just like, and it's before she even have like her message laid out. But I'm just like, I saw the video. This is how I actually came to, she came to hire me. I saw her video and I commented on it. I forget what group it was in, but it's like, you're just, you're likable. Like she just, she wasn't even talking about anything. I didn't even listen to what she was saying. What she was saying didn't even matter. There was just something about her that was likable. She was just very real and authentic. And so there's part of that for you is, is when you tap into that passion, um, you become likable. And that's what I want you to think about is um, as you start to um, practice this stuff, practice presenting yourself, practice speaking about your passions. Um, one of the reasons why I, I push for video a lot of the times uh, for my clients, the reason I'm doing that visibility challenge in uh, my Facebook group, right, like having people, you know, if they want to participate, you know, basically do 30 videos over 91 days, if that's what they choose to do, um, is because whether you end up doing video or not, even though it's a great medium, I always say, if you present well, meaning after you do the videos, et cetera, if you present well and you come across well, and you can, you can come across where almost like you can, if you can convey your it factor, if you will, from a video, then definitely keep using the video. If you can you know, really communicate well and, and get a message across via video, then hey, if you can combine that with the likability and the it factor, then phew, definitely use video. But if you can't do that, maybe that's not the medium. But even regardless, um, if that's not the medium for you down the road, number one, we want to do it to find out. But more importantly is I want you to start using that medium because it's a great practicing tool to having to communicate yourself out loud. Um, we can, it's one thing writing thoughts down and, and I'm, I'm not saying, hey, don't write articles and don't do that stuff. But at, there's, there's an unavoidable aspect of our, our business and I, I would argue this with anybody, like I'll take it on with anybody, is that you've got to be able to speak your message out loud, whether it's recorded or live, I would say both, at some point. If you're not going to speak your message out loud, you're never going to be able to do this business. And, and I'll, I'll go on the record and saying never with no caveat, no asterisk to never, because you've got to be able to speak your message out loud. And that's why I say, let's start to use that video as that medium. And, and the reason why video is so fantastic is because it's black and white. It, it's objective. So after you do your video, not only just post it, like my coaching clients, one of the first things I'll say, especially if they don't know their message and I'm helping them figure out their headline is I'm like, all right, you know, get on video and get in my selling coaching group and post a video, you know, and I had two clients, brand new clients yesterday. And it's like, that's what they're doing. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll see you in there. And people freak out and people do all this stuff. But I'm like, this is a, a, an avenue for you to start getting it out there. But now here, here's what I'm asking you to do with it. I'll relate this to the it factor now is because not only are you practicing speaking your message out loud, articulating those words, um, tapping into a passion, just seeing how, it, how it's portrayed in the real world, but because it's black and white and objective is, now I want you to study it, meaning I want you to watch it. And this might sound like the most painful thing in the world for some people. Uh, however, I want you to watch your video and I want you to watch everything and I want you to listen to your words, I want you to look at your face and your eyes and your hands and your body and what are you doing and what, what do you like most about yourself 
and what do you want to improve upon? That's that body awareness, that spatial awareness as you're presenting. You're presenting. You are a presenter and you must present well. And, and this is part of the practice. See, when I, when I was in the fitness industry, part of, I, I was fortunate in the sense that you know, I was on stage teaching classes um, so I was in front of people. It's like public speaking, you know, three or four times a week, but I'm teaching a group exercise class, you know, strength training or whatever. Um, and then I, I, I was training and I was doing it on a national level. I did national summits, but I also presented um, with Xbox and I did uh, videos for film for um, fitness DVDs that went out to their instructors, ed ed educational videos. And I remember when I first started doing those videos and then we did video review from the practice and you have to watch yourself. And in an exercise format, you know, you've got to not only be aware of how you present vocally, but then also it's, it's your, we call it physical execution, is how you're executing the movements because you're a role model. So we, you would nitpick on like the smallest little things because you're a role model and especially because it's a learning uh, educational DVD that was going out. So I had, the, I had the opportunity there to learn and understand myself and watch myself as much as I didn't like what I maybe heard or saw, but I, I had to understand those points and fine tune that. So then when I then presented live or I could do a call like this or something like that, I'm very aware of the things, um, you know, my tendencies or things that can, you know, pull away from an audience, et cetera. Um, especially if I'm live on the stage, it's, it's understanding, you know, how to carry my body and things like that. So what I'm asking you to do is, is begin that process. And even if you know, well, Jeff, I don't know, you know, what do I look for and things like that. Well, you know what? You know what to look for because you've seen it in other people. You've just got to start to see it in yourself. And that's what I'm asking you to do is, is watch yourself, study yourself. And what would you like to see more of? And what do you like that you can, you know, el elaborate on or, or do more of that in those videos? And that's a great uh, kind of an actionable item right now as a starting point for you, as, a, as if I can leave you with something like that. Um, you can start to review yourself. And as hard as it might be, you're going to start to notice that. And then every time you film and every time you do that, you can start to become aware of those aspects. And that's going to start to build your confidence. And I, I believe the, the, where this all stems from, like I talk about that passion that we tap into, which then brings out that authentic energy and that real energy. Um, coupled with that passion, uh, equally as important, is that self-belief, that self-confidence, and that self-reliance. And that's a huge element of all of this is it all stems back to believing in myself and loving myself and being proud of myself and happy about myself. I can say that, you know, I had, I had a lot of trouble with that early on. I had really low self-esteem, you know, through high school and I, I, through college, I started to work on my body physically and that's how I got into the in exercise science and the fitness industry, et cetera. But then I realized that I never worked on the, my inside, never worked on my self-belief and my self-love. And um, as I began to work on that and couple that with my confidence uh, about around my body and myself and then my abilities, you know, that's where it, it kind of, there's been a point where it just kind of all clicked together finally, like, oh, this is fantastic. And then, then you have that, that's where that it factor can start to come out. It's just that, just a complete self-confidence and love. And, and, and it's hard to even describe that. Um, but I look at some of those things and, and we all know where we're insecure. We all know where... You know, we, what we don't like about ourselves or the tendencies that we have and where we're scared of the most and why we're scared of those things. And, um, and we, we can tend to easily protect ourselves from those or avoid those. But the thing I love about entrepreneurship is uh, you can't hide behind those anymore. Uh, we've got to hit those full on. That's why even sometimes when I work with some of my mentoring clients, they're so fired up to do their business. But not all of them, but some of them, you know, we end up doing you know, two or three months worth of you know, life coaching in a sense of you know, getting them on that track of just really understanding themselves and believing in, in themselves and loving themselves. And um, if that's a space where you, you, know, you need to be right now, start to identify that. And you can doesn't mean you have to put a pause on your business. It means you can start to work on that through even some of those things that I'm saying is, is confronting it head on. Because I will tell you, you can coach around that stuff all day long, um, but at the end of the day, how you're going to move through it and create your business is by actually doing it and working through it as you do it and then beginning to see the results on the other end.